Scary Mysteries, Twisted News, The Bay Area Gone Girl, Mummified Burglar Body. Terrifying cases of true crime and strange events. Every week, Twisted News dives into two mysterious and scary cases currently happening in our world. This week, we'll tackle the intriguing case of the Bay Area Gone Girl, Denise Huskins, and the shocking discovery of a burglar's mummified body inside the home of a hoarder. Get ready for Scary Mysteries, Twisted News. Number one, the Bay Area Gone Girl. Gone Girl is a movie based on Gillian Flynn's novel of the same name and directed by acclaimed filmmaker David Fincher. Released in 2014, the story centers on the disappearance of a woman who found out her husband was having an affair. In what seems to be an elaborate plan of revenge, Amy, the wife, orchestrates her disappearance and murder. Her goal was ultimately to frame her husband Nick for her death. Erin Quinn and Denise Huskins were both physical therapists who found each other in 2014 and instantly hit it off. However, over the years in their relationship, the woman then found out that her man had been messaging his ex fiance It severely affected their relationship, to say the least, which had turned rocky ever since. In March of 2015, the couple decided to sit down and talk over their situation once and for all. They met at Quinn's place on Mar Island in Vallejo. Huskins brought Pete's over and they sat on the couch and they talked for the rest of the night well into the wee hours of the following morning. At around 3 a.m., they were awakened by a man who had broken into their house. Still groggy, they managed to hear the intruder declare a robbery. The pair was then zip-tied and made to wear swimming goggles with the lenses covered with duct tape. Headphones were placed over their ears, and the device played a pre-recorded message which, much to their bewilderment, mentioned Quinn by name. In it, they were instructed to take a sedative and they were also warned not to contact the police. The male victim was heavily sedated as the burglar turned kidnapper took Huskins from their home. As soon as he woke up, Quinn called his brother, an FBI agent, who in turn told him to call the police. Officers from the Vallejo Police Department arrived to inspect the scene of the crime and Quinn could tell right then that the investigators had already been suspecting him of foul play. It didn't help that they later discovered an old blood stain on their bed sheet. From that point on, he had become a suspect for the kidnapping and killing of Huskins. Things began to take a complicated turn when the female victim resurfaced just two days later after her abduction. She was found near her mother's place in Huntington Beach now changing their story, Vallejo authorities accused the woman of staging her own kidnapping. Despite finding each other again, the couple's trauma didn't end. The police stood firm that they had faked their own abduction. Since then, the public referred to their case as the Gone Girl kidnapping. In an interview, Huskins said they were being harassed online by strangers, mocking them of their predicament. But just as the world was about to dismiss the entire fiasco as nothing but a manufactured lie from the alleged victims, a shocking development occurred three months later. It happened when that same intruder committed a similar crime in Dublin, California, only this time he was caught. Detectives found pieces of evidence that would prompt them to connect the Quinn Huskin incident to the new case. In this particular case, officers found a cell phone belonging to a certain Matthew Muller, a former U.S. Marine and Harvard Law School student. Authorities noticed a strand of blonde hair stuck on a pair of goggles discovered among his belongings. A search of his residence in South Lake Tahoe further led to the discovery of a laptop that belonged to Quinn. Muller pleaded guilty to the kidnapping charges 
and was sentenced to 40 years in prison in 2016. In that same year, Huskins and Quinn decided to file a lawsuit against the city of Vallejo for defamation. They claimed that the police destroyed their reputation by making what their legal team said was an outrageous, completely unprofessional, and wholly unfounded claim of disparagement. Three years after, in 2018, the couple won the case. The city was made to pay a settlement amounting to $2.5 million. Most of all, the city made a public apology for what they had done to Huskins and Quinn in 2015. Number 2. Burglar's Mummified Body Shane Snellman was a man who at 15 years old was already charged with the murder of a homeless man. He was later acquitted, but until his disappearance, he was known as a habitual offender. The police had already lost count on how many times he was detained for various crimes. Most of them, however, were related to property theft and drug offenses. A drug addict and an alcoholic, the 39-year-old had no permanent address and had only lived in supported accommodations at Campbelltown in southwestern Sydney, Australia. His last prison stint ended in June of 2002 for petty drug crimes. Then in October of that same year, a certain Miss Denny, one of his acquaintances, noticed his absence. She went on to report his disappearance to the police. Meanwhile, 60 kilometers from Campbelltown, lived a man named Bruce Roberts. He was known to be an extremely reclusive person. Ever since he bought his house in Greenwich, this motorhead and gun-loving individual decided to shun away from the maddening crowd and hole himself within his property. He was never poor, having inherited a million dollars following his mother's death, but he had never worked ever since. The only time he would go out was to go to the supermarket to buy supplies and the drugstore for his medicine. He also maintained minimal contact with his entire family. Living solely on Social Security benefits, Roberts began to hoard, and he did so for the rest of his life. In July of 2017, local emergency services forced their way inside the Greenwich home after they received reports from neighbors who noticed the owner's absence. The 60-year-old apparently hadn't been seen for weeks already. Responders were confronted by walls upon walls of empty boxes, plastic bags, broken luggage, newspaper, and magazines. Rubbish of all sorts piled as high as the ceiling. But amidst all the trash, the officers could still smell the distinct odor of a decomposing body. As they navigated the maze of garbage, they found Robert's body. It was burnt and in an advanced state of decomposition. Medical examiners later determined his death was brought about by natural causes. The reason for the burns was that he was found slumped over a radiant bar heater that was still turned on. It would take a year before authorities returned to Robert's jungle of trash, and by this time, their goal was to clear the entire property of its junk. On May 15, 2018, police found a cache of firearms and ammunition in a bedroom. A week later, cleaners were removing the debris when they came into the home's third bedroom. There, they saw a dirty rug, lifted it up, and found a dead body. The corpse was still fully clothed and in a mummified state. It was found in a seated position with the back against the couch. Strewn around the body and throughout the room were up to 70 cans of air freshener products, which they believed were used to abate the foul odor emanating from the corpse. Police removed the body from the scene and gave it to the medical examiner. They found shotgun wounds, which were later confirmed to be the cause of the person's death. A DNA analysis was also made to identify the deceased, and the result came to confirm that this was Shane Snellman who, as mentioned, 
hadn't been seen since October of 2002. The local authorities maintained that there was no other explanation for the incident except for the fact that Mr. Roberts shot and killed Mr. Stellman for motives and reasons that may never be known. So there were two of the most intriguing and mysterious stories around. The world can be a crazy place and Twisted News is sure to show you why. If you guys enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.